Hi, you guys. Can anybody see me? Here I am on the computer now. Ugliest. Um, I don't have a thing for this. <laughs> I don't have a thing. Oh, my God. What is with the iPhone, y'all? What is with the iPhone? I have to do it like this. How is everybody? I don't see. Hi, I found a way onto my computer. After I threw the phone at the wall, y'all, I threw the phone. There, I can see you. Somebody, ha I can't even see where I'm looking, though. I just feel ugly on the computer. Where the fuck am I looking? I don't even know. Let's see. Where am I looking? Eh, where am I looking, y'all? Oh, my God. I know, right? No, it's not an ad. I, okay, I'm watching. I I just, about, I have no, um. I have this on a book. See? There, look, Marilyn's down there. I have this on a book because I don't have a, it's my computer, y'all. Okay, somebody, I'm going to stab myself. Seriously, I'm so aggravated. Somebody has to tell me with these Apple people on what, <laughs> on what fucking planet. Okay, seriously, I just want you guys to see this. I just want you to see this. It says my rotation is locked. So it tells you to, it tells you to scroll down and you see this, right? This is the way it is. It's not locked. Look, when you do that, it says portrait orientation is locked. So I just did that, but I took it off. I never touched the settings. I didn't touch the settings, y'all. And look, oh my God, right? No, I know it wasn't locked. I heard a creepy voice on YouTube, on your YouTube shorts. What shorts? I don't even know. Am I wearing shorts? God, <laughs> I just want to fucking punch somebody. Ba bam. Okay. Anyway, um, no, I really hate it because I just I want to just like throw shit at the wall. Ottawa in the house. Yeah. No, but I was on the phone for three hours last night between Apple, and I can't even see where I'm looking, so it's not even fun doing this because I'm staring down. It's all upside down. Oh my god. Anyway, um. Yeah, I'll have to look at your things. Oh, geez. Yeah, anyhow, I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, still saying it on the phone. It's saying it on all my phones. Three different phones. I have a backup phone. This is a 14 plus. I have to look at this. I'm being get, shown a little video here. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to show you this. This brings some happiness. I was visiting Little Meadow. Let's see. It's being an, I, I phoned Apple. The guy's like, yeah, I don't know. I messaged the tech people for two hours last night on YouTube. And they're like, you probably just need to get rid of some storage on your phone. I'm like, I have 500 gigabytes because I edit videos on my phone. I do everything on my phone. Uh, rebooting is extremely worthwhile. Rebooting what? Rebooting. What's a short video? Slow never did. What is the short video? I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so confused. What is a short video? Okay, look, y'all, you want to see Baby Meadow? They just sent me this. Okay. Lila's playing with her. See? Okay, you're getting baby videos now. That's Meadow. She's three months, y'all. She thinks it's all funny. Little Meadow thinks everything is so funny. Um, yeah, she's real cute. Lila's playing games. I can't even see. I feel like I'm upside down on the. You should stare up here. Oh my God. I'm going to just look over here. So annoying, you all. So annoying. Okay, let's see. All right. So, anyway. Okay, look. I can't even stand the set like this. Look. Look, y'all. There. There, we're fixing the set. The set is being fixed. The set is fixed. Okay, the set is fixed. The door handle has been covered. <laughs> the freaking door handle has been covered, y'all. Um, <laughs> Meadow is really cute. Yeah, I, she's really cute. You guys want to see something super cool. I'll talk about some stuff in a second, but you want to see the coolest thing ever? Okay. Because I'm mentally ill, I figured this out. Because I'm mentally ill, for real, okay, because of this, 
I bought this. Have you guys seen this? <laughs> Do you know what this is? I am insane, but so many times I waste time in the drive-thru <laughs> getting coffee that like one time I made us drive two hours out of our way in the Grand Canyon, coming from Utah to the Grand Canyon to find Starbucks only to find it made shitty on this park, blah, 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 blah. Um, anyhow, this is a car coffee machine. It makes espresso. This little bitch makes espresso. Yes, this makes espresso. I'm in love with it. I, you put the water up here. Oh, there's still water in it. It heats the water. It plugs into my car. Like I'm living in my car kind of sometimes because I go from here to there to everywhere. And it's called an Uten, Uten. This one's an Uten, O-U-T-I-N. I'm not sponsored by them. I fucking love them, okay? I researched it. So I have an espresso at home. Keithy and um, Jason and John got it for me in 2018. And look, it has a, a cord you just plug into your car. You can do fresh coffee. <laughs> I think the Kennedys are all trolls. All right, sorry, I said it. Too much coffee. You can do fresh coffee or it does the original Nespresso pods. I just want you to see this. The little Nespresso pods, it does these. You just put it in the bottom like that, turn it on, and it'll make four cups if you don't have hot water, but it'll do 100 cups on a charge if you have hot water. So I said to myself, because I'm insane, I said, what if you had hot water in your car? Like, what if you're that bitch with hot water in your car? So here's my car kettle, y'all. It just came in the mail. It's like 20 bucks for my car kettle. Yes, I needed a car kettle so I can heat this up and I can drink tea in the car. I'm mental. This is it. This I'm living in my car, but I got to show you one other thing. Then I'll shut up and get on with other stuff. I haven't opened this yet, but literally... <laughs> You fill it up with your water, like out of your water bottle, whatever. <laughs> you plug it in, plug it in, and it's just the size of a water bottle. All fits in my cooler. I put the hot water in the top there and I'm styling while I'm stuck in LA traffic. Drinking more coffee so I can come back and lose my mother ever fucking mother loving line. Right? Anyway, so this is my... Well, because I'm, you know, I'm, I go to the desert a lot and sometimes I go to hotels and sometimes I just want a cup of tea. If I'm stuck on an airplane. I have this in my purse. That's right. I can have an espresso on the airplane. All right. I've got one other thing to show you. This is serious OCD during the full moon. <laughs> yes, I can trust my own. It's, no, it's worked. I, I, I took some over to Meadows. I didn't give Meadow any because she's a baby, but I gave some to John. Jason doesn't like hot drinks. He likes cold drinks. So I could have made a iced coffee. I told Kenna about it because I think sometimes I wait too much in the lines. Now, I know you're asking about the milk frost, the milk steam, the steam milk, right? I know you're asking about it. So for $9, <laughs> I can put hot milk in here after I put the water in there put hot milk in there in my cooler which I carry and it stays cold and guess what it's a milk frother for my purse yeah you heard that right you heard it right y'all that's what I'm gonna do this is who I am I'm a coffee drinking traveling weirdo person <laughs> anyway um this is all I need in life right here. And it has a little cup on the bottom. Just so you know, this is what Gigi's turned into. This is what being a grandmother is all about when you're traveling between two houses, 60 different miles, 120 miles a day. That's it. I am a coffee whore, big time coffee whore. I'll do anything for coffee, really. I'll suck your dick for coffee. Don't take that seriously. Don't take that seriously. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, it was a $9 frother on, and I had to get the camouflage one for it to be $9 or it was double in price. I'm like, I like camouflage. I'll stick some rhinestones on it. It will be perfect. Hi from Burbank, Erica. Is that Erica? 
Is that uh, Erica, Erica that I know or a different Erica? Anyway, coffee brings me so much happiness. I know. <laughs> this is an addiction. I'm like a pothead, but with coffee. But anyway, my point is when um, when we were in, if <laughs> you get trying to write exactly, here's my frother. No, the girl in Nespresso, she's like, yeah, just get this for when you travel. I said, shut up. Because last year when I was at the fire and flight camp, seriously, because I was too stupid to order ahead of time, I waited like 30 minutes for my coffee. There was only one Starbucks in town. Well, as long as I have my shit, I'm good, right? So I'm like, this is what I did. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, my cat is right here. I can't move the camera, but she's, come here. You want to come say hi? She's right here. She's really mad at mommy because mommy left her all day in favor of Meadow. There she is. There she is. There she is. She likes the coffee frother too. She likes the, she thinks it's cute. We got a water thing too. And we drank five gallons of water in a week and a half. We're drinking a half a water, a half a gallon of water. Is that right? A day? Yeah, we're drinking 15, 15 gallons a month. Me and her, she does not like the water machine. She's like, what is that? Um, you can go to my website. CC, go to sloanbella.com. Um, yeah, she's giving me the side eye because she knows that we're drinking coffee later. And last night we were up till one o'clock. Yes, mommy loves you. Okay, she's had enough of me. Anyway, she doesn't like filming on this either. She hates it. Um, how long were you married to your first husband? Um, <laughs> four minutes, four months. But I was with him. I met him, I think, when I was 15. I was at Aunt Betty's. I met him. And I married him for four months and I ran away. If I'd have been smart, I'd have keep running from everybody because I'm not really the marrying type. However, having let's see. What do you get from Starbucks? Here's what I get, Stella. I get, um, what the hell do I get? I get a, wait, my cousins grew up in Mobile, went to Murphy High School, Blue Eye Dumplings. Okay, I just missed that. I want a cat fountain for our cat. Oh, a cat fountain. Yeah. My, my cat does not like this water machine. She's like terrified of it. <laughs> Thank you, Donna, for that. Okay. Here is <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. I, you know what? I, when I went down to Meadow, I'm like, Gigi doesn't have to go get coffee. Gigi can make you coffee Meadow. And then Meadow thinks you're crazy. So Papa John said, let me see how that thing works. I said, bitch, I charged it. Let's have some coffee. He had some. He's like, that's strong. I'm like, that's the point. That's the point. Anyway, um, I'm allergic to marriage too. Yes, I get, oh, white chocolate mocha is good. Um, I do get water. I always get a, here's the thing, you guys. I get a grande non-fat cappuccino with an ad shot because I'm in it for the crack effect. So I'm really a crackhead, but I don't do crack. And I get it with non-fat milk, slightly wet, which is more wet than normal, which sounds like a porn. My friend Arlene, her husband, Bill, was like, sounds like I'm ordering something from the porn shop when I get your drink. <laughs> slightly wet. <laughs> I'm filming on my computer. It looks weird, right? Does it look weird? I don't know what it looks like. And I'm on Chrome. Safari is fucking with me, okay? Um, and then I get a, yes, I get a venti ice water with extra ice. That's what I get. Because you know what? Yes, a soda streamer for Jason, right? You know why I get a venti ice water? There's two reasons. Because I'm clearly insane when it comes to coffee. Number one, coffee dehydrates you. True. So number two, if you're going to charge me $6 for coffee, when my little pods, my Nespresso's are a dollar, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to get a venti ice water with extra ice. And then I save the ice and I put it into my what? My blend jet for my car. And I put in my protein shake in that with the ice from the water. And I mix it with that. And I mix it with grind lemon peels and blueberries and collagen. And that's my snacky snack. Um, there. Okay. Venti ice white mocha with quad shots and blonde espresso with light ice. Add oak milk <laughs> and salted caramel. Okay. You know what, girl? I can't go with you because I'll be putting on 10 pounds in a hot freaking section in a second. 
Um, sounds good, right? Sounds super good. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more thing. Again, this is my new love because I am just that person. Okay, I want to show you something. So I've been taking all kinds of, um, let's see, wait, I've been taking vegan collagen. I'm taking the cow collagen because I'm not a vegan really. I just don't eat beef. But um, <laughs> so I've been taking all kinds of classes. And last week I threw my right side out on the on the lolly. Oh God. Anyway, trying to do that. You know, I'm trying to keep up with these young babes that are so cute. So tonight I had my pole dancing class. So I just want to show you something. By the way, when I was a stripper, we didn't wear shoes this high for any reason whatsoever. I mean, maybe some people did, but not me because I like to bounce around. I just want to show you, do you see this? Do you see this shoe? This is what we wear in our class. And this is an inch shorter than everybody else's. They're like, you really should go with the eight inch. I'm like, you really are crazy. <laughs> you see this? This. This is what I was wearing. You see? What is that? Anyway, what a hell of a workout, y'all. Um, yeah, I know. It's. I'm telling you, seven, <laughs> seven inches. I had to jump up on the pole. Well, grab up on the pole. Jump up, grab it with my thighs, which are now bruised. It looks like I've been assaulted. Grab it with my thighs and then let go. No, let go of this hand, move to the right, cross my legs and uncross them and move to the left, hanging off the pole. I'm so not good at that. It's hilarious, y'all. It's hilarious. No, well, I hang on my old ankles. Yeah, no, my ankles couldn't hang. I'm afraid because I'm a runner, you know, that thing is a weapon, isn't it? No, I have no old moves. I am the most clumsy, uncoordinated. It's hilarious. All the little girls are so thin and so cute. The teacher's so darling, so darling. They have little untarnished bodies and their my bodies never look like their bodies. Okay. I've always struggled with my body, but um, their bodies are so cute and they're so agile and so like really beautiful. And the teacher's really skilled <laughs> laughing at my ass because I had to jump up and then my boobs get in the way of the pole. And I'm like, ow, I hurt myself. Um, anyway, it was like, um, it was very fun, but I'm doing it just, uh, there has to be, it's a, it is a workout. I was sweating. Sw Does it look the same? Thank you for telling me that Gemini. Cause I can't tell. I am so clumsy. And then she's like, pull close to the pole and move, slither. And I'm like, oh God, I can't do this. this is, I look ridiculous. So I'm still wearing the same, you know, I'm where I always wear, I just wear tank tops, but I had to put on teeny tiny shorts. That's horrifying when you have old lady legs. Like you're like, fuck, I have cellulite. I always had cellulite, but now like when the pole grabs it, I can see where my skin is loose. And I'm like, ah, anyway, they don't care. So there you go. <laughs> Um, so I'm doing that and, uh, yeah, it's just, oh my God. Anyway, it's pretty fun. But yeah, if you look at these, these, and the reason for them, which I didn't know because, you know, I, what the hell, I didn't really do all those moves back then. We're talking 40 years ago, but look, the reason for these is because when you're, you use this to like push off and land with, okay? And you use the heel so it doesn't hurt your feet, actually. Look at that shit. What the hell is that? <laughs> anyway, that was tonight. Um, yeah. I can't guarantee. Yeah, no, it's pretty fun. It's, uh, yeah, they're ankle breakers. But we, we all have our own pole. And I just sweat and that's it. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. I'm trying to get strong for, you know, my set myself on fire next year. And what? Make coffee while I'm there. I'm just saying. Uh, so, yeah. So anyway, I'm doing that. And then I have um, strippers and one of the dances were cowboy boots. Yes. Yes. You could wear cowboy boots. I could wear cowboy boots. Yes. Let's see. I use my boyfriend as my exercise. <laughs> That's as my exercise pole. You're fucking hilarious. Well, I don't have a boyfriend. I have a cat. She might be offended if I touch her like that. Ew. So then I have my um, beautiful little teacher that's teaching me how to climb up the silk ropes. 
which, why is it the Russian climbing? So we all have, see, I feel like I'm looking the opposite way of my camera. <laughs> I can't. Anyway, the Russian, we have to do Russian climbing on the silk. So you have to climb up. You have to, okay, this is, this is her instruction to us. Again, I'm in a beginner class. This is the instruction. She's like, Sloan. I'm like, yeah. She goes, take the silks and wrap it on the inside. Then she stops the class and she's like, remember, where does the penis go? And I'm like, on the inside. And she's like, remember, wrap it on. The Seriously, this is her way of teaching. Anyway, you wrap your leg around it and then you have to straighten your leg and then arch your foot like this and put the other foot on it. So like you, you flatten it and then you unwrap it and climb up with your hands and other foot and then do that again all the way up like the Russians. It's considered, it's called Russian climbing. And I'm like, that is crazy. Anyway, it's, um, yeah, so I'm doing that. And then last week I threw my back out because I got on the hoop. I did really good on it and well, not good. I did adequate. Then I went on the silks. I put it on like a knapsack. I flipped my legs up over my head. And remember, I'm A, not flexible. B, I'm old as dirt. And C, I don't know where my legs were going, but I just did what she said. She's like, put it on like a knapsack. Now flip your legs up. Then you wrap your legs outside to in, right? So your legs are held on. Like pink has to be so strong to do that. And then I let go of my hands and I was a frog. It's called frog. So I was a frog. And then, and then when I got off it, I'm like, oh, fuck. So um, I like jump ropes. I have a jump rope in the kitchen, a trampoline in the kitchen. I have a jump rope in the kitchen, a trampoline in the kitchen because I do um, lymphatic jumping. I have weights by the front door and I have a treadmill under the couch. So and then I climb mountains and stuff. So, yeah, I know it was something. Um, yeah, you might kick yourself, but you kind of fall back on the rope and then just flip your legs up. That's okay. And then I can hold and, and you know, do that. But um, I am the least skilled in any class I take. I'm like the weirdo. Orangeville, there you go. I noticed you because you're orange pumpkins. Orangeville, Ontario. I am like, I am like what... Well, pink may be a dude. I don't care if you're a dude or a chick. For you to climb up those those silks like that, man, you are tough. You are tough. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm the most unskilled at any class I take. And now I take pride in that. Like, just the fact that I'm there like a fool and doing it. It's actually pretty fun. Hi, Mew. Oh, Mew, she's trying to bite my hand right now because she's mad at mommy in the stripper shoes. She don't like the stripper shoes either. <laughs> Look. Mew, there, there, there's the people, there's the people, Mew, yeah, there's the people, you see the people, do you see them, say hi, can you see their little names, everybody, there, I know, Meadow's so cute, are you twitching, are you going to get agitated, agitated, um, anyway, yeah, uh, let's see, why you have a new boyfriend, no, I have no boyfriend, um, no, I have no boyfriend at all. Thank God. Um, yeah, she does. Don't bite mommy. She bit my hand. So anyway, the worldwide, oh my God, sorry, you guys, I forgot my pillow and I'm now I'm wrapping my legs around the chair and I'm pretending I'm swinging. Okay. I'm not. Yeah. She's grown so much. She's so mad at mommy. She was waiting on the chair, staring at me when I got home. So I walked up to the door and she's spying out the window. And then she sees me and then she gets so mad because I haven't fed her, but I fed her twice before I left. So anyway, how, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Yes, it is fun. I'm trying to get it in. You know what? Doing different. I'm a runner. So, and I was never a good runner. I'm just consistent with the running. And that's the thing. But getting into shape and doing different things all the time is really what's fun. So I try to really keep myself aligned differently now. Uh, Momo, my cat listens to her too. Cute. Hi, Momo. Oh, baby kitty Momo. How cute. Momo, my last boyfriend was 16 years younger than me. Yeah, I can't just, I'm trying to tone my arms. Lost quite. Okay. We writer, you know how you tone? Find an aerial class and climb up those ropes like a Russian. I'm just saying, they call it Russian climbing. Your arms, 
will start to get toned. I have a trainer twice a week too, although he kind of got injured. So I'm waiting for him to pick back up, but I do all of that. And then I have to teach myself how to do it myself again. Yeah. It was just a loud noise, right? Oh, your daughter's nickname is Momo. Uh, have you paid? Wait, Richard? No, I haven't. I have not. Weird. They just put an ad on your live. What the fuck? I have no idea what's going on. I can't figure out what's going on. Okay, Tupac, y'all. Why now? Why now, Tupac? -epoc? Tupac. Uh, I told Lila. Lila was wearing a t-shirt with Tupac. And there was me Tupac's music playing in like a car commercial. And I said, do you know who sings this? And she looked at the TV and she was like, no. And I said, well, who's on your shirt? She said, Tupac. I said, that's Tupac. They stole his music. I forget what I forget what it was okay. for something. Um, I used to date Momo. Wait. I used to date a mom. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know why they're blaming Tupac. I mean, P. Diddy is one of the biggest, stupidest people on planet Earth. Like, somebody ought to just bitch slap him. No one cares if he has money. He's an obnoxious little bitch. If he was in real life without his money, somebody would punch him in the face, and that would be the end of him because he'd be a crybaby crying back to his mommy. Anyway, um, yeah, California love on the commercial. You know which one, Beth? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I I don't know because um Oh my god, what's his name? The heck's his name? Who was he dating at the time he died? Whose daughter? Quincy Jones' daughter. That's more to do with it. That's more to do with it. Did you hear the creepy voice in your house last night that said go away? No, who said go away? His killer, they say his killer got arrested. I don't believe anything they say that Vlad TV is fed or an informant. I don't even know what that is. I don't think Tupac would like that. <laughs> ah, thank you. Kad Kadada Jones, whatever. Yes, there you go. She knows something. So, um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't believe it's the guy either. I mean, maybe they, maybe three people put a hit on him, but they're also, I mean, they're all so ghetto. They're so, and I have to interject with a, with a, <laughs> my kettle has a carrier. Okay. Shut up, Sloan. You're mental. Mental today. Mental. Okay. So I don't believe the Tupac thing at all. Let's see that 11 second video of you trying to get your, oh, there was a voice in the background that said, go away. Really? Fuck that voice. Bitches fucking up shit in my house. Somebody, somebody put a spell on me. I know that. I'm now I sound weird. Somebody, somebody, okay. Anyway, have you noticed? Have any of you noticed? Maybe not. As far as three tier sponsors and tech support. Let's see. What's three Vlad TV on YouTube? Oh, I, I have never even watched it. What happened? Can you do another reading on Tupac? Yeah, I don't believe anything they're saying. Suge Knight knows who did it. Yeah, he does. Yeah, let's see. I always felt like Snoop killed Pac. <laughs> Do you hear how we talk? I always feel like Snoop killed Pac. Snoop Dogg. Like, why? Bathe in salt and coconut oil. I will. I will. Yeah, well, I know. Like, I was telling John today, I'm like, this bitch put a spell on me. Anyway, he's like, it doesn't work. I'm like, you're stupid. It doesn't work. That's accurate. But it can work when you don't know it. So... Sage your house, you are protect. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope no one is, but it's no fun being normal. <laughs> I'm very normal. John's not here, but he, I mean, I was over there. Get a voodoo doll. I can't send it back. Um, Pat, why do you ask about pronouns? So I was at the dentist because I'm still debating about this tooth. Now I'm on antibiotics again because it's infected. They want $2,000 for a root canal. I don't have that. I don't feel like doing it. Then they told me this. If you pull the bottom tooth, which seems like a good idea now since it's painful. This is what's making me insane. Then your top tooth is going to come down. And I'm like, no. Anyway, that's all I'm saying. There you go. Thank you. Yes, that's that's all I'm saying. Uh, let's see. I had an implant fail over 3k. Yeah. See, I'm, they want to, that's what I'm wondering. Cause it's a wisdom tooth. I just don't want to look like I have such a skinny face. You know what I mean? So don't do a root canal. Have you seen? 
seen root cause. No, I have many root canals in my mouth because I'm a sugar eating popcorn smacking lip smacking sugar addict person or whatever. Um, your teeth will shift when you get a tooth pulled. My bottom tooth broke. Yes, Beth, this is a broken tooth and it leaks down in there. And sometimes I eat something hot and I'm like, mother, It's a 3.5 for a failed root canal. Oh my God. Yes. I lost the bottom tooth and got an implant in the teeth shift and come down. Why? Why did they come down? Why? And why can't I put a, I don't know. Like, mm, I don't know. And I'm fine. Okay. Allison, <laughs> this is my wisdom tooth and I'm a big ass baby. I just got two cavities filled and bit my, yeah, of course. Um, Let's see. My teeth were good. Yeah. I'm trying to ignore it, but eventually, I mean, it's been four months and it's just been festering in my mouth because I went to get it pulled and I left because I'm like, I don't want to fucking get it pulled because they don't like fake teeth. Trustworthy dentist, Peter, where, where am I finding that? Is that like a trustworthy vet? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Joan Crawford, the buckle. Okay. I don't know what that is. Use the liquid form of Advil and it will kill the nerve. Well, thanks, Annie. Do I swallow the Advil or do I inject it into my nerve? I've got two broken molars. And he said, I need a specialist Advil and Orgel. Yes, Julia, this is a broken molar, but it's a wisdom tooth. Yes. Tooth pain is bad. Salt water is good. I'm addicted to pumpkin spice lattes. Yes. Um, having an increased infection is worse. Yes, it is. I'm walking around with that mm -hmm. crown. Yeah, that's what they want. And then he said they could pull it and put an implant in there. So, but then if the implant fails, I'm out the money and that's going to mess the infection in the tooth can be very dangerous. Pull it. Well, I'm hoping to die soon, Tammy. That's why I'm leaving the infection there. I'm thinking maybe it'll kill me before I hit 60. <laughs> they say wisdom teeth aren't necessary, but look. Your jawline, that's your tooth right there. There's my other little tooth. I can feel my teethies. There's your tooth. So when you pull them, what like what happens? Does this sag down and I look like those people with dentures? I don't want to look like that. Albert, go be an actor, but be an actor in local theater. You won't get into Hollywood unless you're whatever. I skipped the crown, then the tooth broke. Yes, I've done that too. I think that's the problem with this tooth. I got mine out at 14. Yeah, I told them don't pull any of my teeth. Don't take my fucking wisdom teeth because I might be dumb after that. That's what I said. No, I'm kidding. I didn't say that. I implant. Oh, my God, Janet, that sounds fantastic. Just get the gas. No gas. I don't even like to use anesthetic. Mm -mm. Uh, it's better for your health to pull it rather than do root canals. Watch the movie. <laughs> my advice is to just end the infection will do harm to your jaw. Uh, look, um, you poke the Advil with a pin and use the liquid. Oh my God, who's doing that, Annie? Three most important things, water, salt, and fat. Okay, clove helps. Yeah, my wisdom teeth were sideways. Can teeth regenerate? I wish they could. Why don't we get new teeth, new boobs, new booty, and new teeth? I'm kidding. Anyway, um, don't leave the space empty if you don't. Teeth will shift, but it's my back tooth. Mm, I had a wisdom tooth pulled a few years ago, 52, no big deal. Well, you're brave, Sarah. You're brave. I'm a baby. I'm looking at him. I'm like, yeah, well, he, the, the, the dentist yesterday, this is the second day, and I have another one on Friday. I'm only going to one more cons consultation, but the dentist yesterday, he's like, we could just pull it now. I'm like, yes, we could, couldn't we? <laughs> and I left. Um, so that's what I did. Um Yes, I use my, I know my wisdom teeth is to keep my face up, y'all. If you don't have teeth, your jaw goes. You look like those old ladies with their gums flapping. No, thanks. Um, <laughs> had four wisdom teeth removed at 23. My mouth's too small. Well, now it's done for you. That's good. Yeah, um, it could blow up on you. Just get it out. Y'all are so nice. It's painful to get the teeth pulled. Honestly, it hurts to. Yeah, I know. Can you talk about the shadow people? Yeah, I can talk about the shadow people. Um, yeah, well, apple, apple cider vinegar is good. Yes, cold oil, pink Himalayan salt. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Just protect the light shadow. I just would, like, if the tooth is going to kill me, hey, good. But 
like I'll avoid it for years. Like I'll be on the ground, passed out, half dead before I pull it. Um, <laughs> okay. Tooth infection can spread to your heart. Yes. It can kill you again, waiting for it. Um, clove oil, rub it on the tooth. Yeah, I know. Uh, I kicked out cancer. You're smart. Yeah. Similar situation for five months in tooth number 31. Had it pulled much better now. Can't tell it's gone. Barb, you're smart and brave. That's the one thing. The dentist makes me crazy. I get in there and I'm like, I hate you. And I hate you. And I hate you. <laughs> and I hate all of you. Um, yeah, I saw the one of Brittany. Brittany's under mind control. Let's see. I don't know how much room your wisdom teeth are taking up. But how about getting them out and seeing what you think before starting the implant? Yeah, I could do that. But I'm old. So you have to remember older people right here. And then it's right here. So this will sag because that's what holds your job is your teeth. People that pull a lot of teeth look like old people. <laughs> I know they love making look Brittany look crazy. I know. Can you do an energy reading on Andrew? Kuhn? That's interesting. You had a crazy dream. How interesting. I haven't heard that name in years. Um, yeah, I know. I know. My dentist gave me two. <laughs> he got the drugs. Well, me and Jason used to not even take Novocaine. Like, I don't like to put anything in my body, except for my fake boobs. But they've been in there for 25 years. So, you know, it is a lot. I don't have it. I can't just spend two grand on that. No, Brittany's not crazy. She's mind controlled and she's been abused. And they also had her on um, lithium, which just turns your brain to mush. So wisdom teeth are in the socket. Your face won't sag if it's pulled. Thank you, mermaid mortician, mortician, mermaid mortician. They're in the socket. Good point. Now I'm liking your point there. Yeah. She should take the knives. There is knife dancing. There are some burlesque girls that do knife dancing and knife dancing with fire. I just do the fire fan. I can't do the knives, the fire. I, I just can't do it all because yeah. I'll end up, lithium was great for me, but then it made me angry. Well, the lithium's okay if you need it for a while, but she's been on it straight for two decades. So, and I don't even think she had a problem to begin with. I don't think she had a bad infection that went to my face. Oh my God. They had to remove all my, <gasps> Kimberly. Oh my God. Kimberly. Where did you get the infection from, sweetheart? I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I think she is being drugged. But now I'm so upset over what Kimberly said. Colloidal silver on your toothpaste. Thank you for that, Pamela. Thank you. Y'all are so smart. So smart. Shadow people. Okay. Why is P. Diddy so involved? P. Diddy is a Satanist, a gay man, a booty caller, a liar, short, stupid, and he thinks he's all that. And he's a bitch ass. Anyway, what holds your jaw in place to the bone? Your jaw around the chin. And their side, this is just a small wisdom tooth. It's of no value. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I know, but y'all, I just can't part with teeth. I have a thing about it. Oh, my God. I have a thing about it, y'all. Um, so you can't really my car accident cause roots crap. And co oh my honey. Oh my goodness. And a car accident. I hope you're okay. I, it's so weird what happens to your body when shit happens, isn't it? Yep. Puffy, just a foofy, <laughs> foofy, puffy. Um, yeah. Lithium eats your brain. It's not really good. Did you, I've tried the holistic, it's just insanity. Um, unevolved Scorpio's. Tita, that's so interesting. Yeah, Puffy's an unevolved Scorpio. He's like a psychopath. Okay, shadow people. Let's talk about shadow people. And my milk frother from in the car. Okay, sorry, I digress. Shadow people. So my understanding of shadow people is they come through the astral. So they live on the astral plane. They haven't crossed over and they don't necessarily have to be like people. A lot of times shadow people are... Um, I really feel shadow people are government workers that come through the astral level for real. I'm not even joking. And I feel they go through a timeline and they come through as shadow people. So I feel like a lot of them are government workers. I also feel that there's other entities that come through the astral that haven't crossed over. Um, I won't look sucked in. <laughs> Trees were health issues caused by me. 
Oh, I'm glad it saved your life, sweetheart. I think I, I just don't even know what to say. I'm really happy. Um, so, no, we can go to the astral. I would say the astral is more where you go when you do drugs, smoke weed, um, you know, whatever, drink. I think you go on to the, well, shadow people are scary because you're being watched, targeted, and they're taking information. They're using information from you. And I really believe they're government agents. They might not be human, but I believe they're government agents. I really do. I don't necessarily think they're all like aliens or, you know, whatever. Um, what about meditation and astral? Uh, are they, some are non-human entities. Yes, Ruby. Yes. Some are as well. Absolutely. And keep in mind, the government has non-human entities working for them because the government in and of itself are trying to entrap human beings. They are trying to take our power. Once we realize we have power, you know, I've been so drained this week. Um, the, uh, where, where do you go? Wait, do you die if you die in the, if you die in the astral level, it means your etheric body has stepped away from the physical. If you see that, then yeah, you're dead in the physical, your astral body. Okay. So your physical body. So you, your physical, like you can touch yourself, your physical body, your etheric body lives in the astral. Your emotional body lives outside of both bodies. So what happens is you have a silver cord. I feel like literally my eyes are collapsing in this. I can't look that way. You have a silver cord attaching your physical body to your etheric body. And if those separate and tether apart, then you're dead. That's actually how you die. You would be dead. Can transmutation be? I hope so. <laughs> Lyle, I don't know. I think it could. Um, I don't think, let's see, I have seen them with my guides. They told me to push towards the light and they went away. My guide calls them crawlers. Okay. Yeah. Don't push towards the light. Do I mean, push wherever you want, but um, I've seen the shadow people. I saw just before Keith died about a week before I saw Jimmy and I saw the shadow people um, I know Nancy Pelosi was evicted. Bitch ass bitch. Bitch, take that. Poop, poop, bye, gone. <laughs> um, yeah, here's what I would do. I would, um, to get rid of shadow people, honestly, they target certain people. So when you think of anything, whatever it is you're thinking about night and day, whatever it is you're doing, however you're thinking, when you're thinking, you have to really block your thoughts. You have to cover your thoughts because they um, they tap into what you're thinking. They extract fear. They extract problems. They extract all kinds of things from you in order to harness your energy when you realize what they're doing. That's why you cannot listen to anybody. I see that. So, yes, it is an ability. Danielle, very good observation. That's what it is. Um, why was the B allowed to even be at the Capitol? What said I, I, what B? What B? Uh, you mean Nancy Pelosi, bitch? My shadow people were always connected to people in my life. I knew deep down I shouldn't have around. Oh, interesting. Ditch them, ditch the shadow. That's very interesting. Tree, tree. I can't pronounce your last, your handle, but anyway, tree. I'm going to call you tree like with buddies. A tree. I'm stick. Anyway, um, the, that's a very good observation. The shadow people to me come through the astral level. The astral level is a lower frequency. We're on a lower vibration than the astral level, but the astral level in and of itself is a very low frequency. And the shadow people come through again. They are government operatives a lot of the time. They spy on people. They know when to hit different groups of people for whatever reason, and they enjoy harnessing our energy. So they enjoy harnessing the energy. They love rape, murder, pillaging, destruction, all of those things. They love that stuff. So when you're looking at shadow people, they tend to be non-human or half-human entities that reside on the astral level and live within that vibration. And it's kind of like on another timeline through another dimension. So it's like hidden and hidden like that. Um, I don't know how to get rid of them permanently, but what I do know is I look at them like they are, like I would look at an ant that's going after the cat's food. Like I'm like, you're not going to get my cat's food. Like you're a stupid little ant, right? I mean, they're very sweet, but you're not going to get my cat's food. Like, how are you going to get my cat's food? You're just a little ant. I look at them like that. 
I don't look at them like they have superiority over us. I don't look at them like they get to tell us what to do. I look at it like I come from God's source and therefore your energy directed at me, you can rattle off all you want. I don't have to stay in your frequency because I don't care. So the way to get rid of them is probably to, oh yes, a, a little sunshine. That's very good with psychics. A lot of psychics get bullshit information because they either have demonic entities or entities, demonic just means non-human entities, right? So they have non-human entities or crossbreed people slash alien slash whatever. They have those energies and those frequencies can definitely pop in. That's why, and here's a lesson if you're doing psychic readings. First of all, honestly, try not to use tools. Try not to use any tools. Try to get the information just off the top of your head. Just try to do it like that. Yeah, I love tools, but I don't use them because when I do an astrology reading, that is a tool. However, however, I'm not doing it with every reading. When I ask you your birthday, I'm tapping into your energy. But here's, here's what I would say. When you get information, you always give what you get. Like, don't judge the information. Like, if you say something, you may say, I don't feel comfortable saying that because it seems like it's crazy, right? Or whatever. Always give the information, but take a mental note of when it happens. So for example, when I see something in a dream state or I feel like something's going to happen, like I have um, a feeling that something's going to happen, I keep a note on that. What was the feeling? I'm going to give you a great example because this truly happened. So I used to have anxiety and panic a lot, which can be a symptom of psychic um you know, strong psychic ability. You're trying to avoid people tapping into your energy, etc. We were coming home from Canada and I have to say it must have been 2006. And we'd been at the cousins and I wanted to get a crock pot <laughs> because I wanted to cook pork chops. Ew. But anyway, the boys like the pork chops. So I want to cook the pork chops. Anyway, as we were flying into LAX, I had the worst panic attack the worst panic attack. Like I was like, the plane's going to hit another plane. Like we were almost on the, on the tarmac. And I was like, this is so bad. Anyway, we almost did hit another plane, but I, so I thought that that was it, but then I still had the panic. We drove all the way back to the Valley, we drove to Burbank and I'm like, I'm still panicked. Right. I could not get rid of the feeling. So John went to work. I went to get my crock pot. I was cooking. I was actually in my house and I was cleaning upstairs the boys were downstairs playing video games or watching TV, whatever it was they were doing. It was in the summer. And in my, I had the vacuum on and I turned around and there was this dude in my bedroom, random dude. And he was wearing like, um, escape mental patient stuff. Thank you for that. Oh my God. Voice is telling me he's worthless. See, he doesn't want to live. Yes. Let me tell you, Santa. Thank you for that, honey. Thank you. Um, so I'll finish this and I'll address that. I woke up and drink. So anyway, this man was in my room, young guy, probably in his thirties. And he literally looked like dazed and confused. I turned the vacuum off and turned around. First thing I'm worried about is Jason and Keith. So he said something about, can he use a phone? And I said, sure, it's downstairs by the front door. Meanwhile, it's in my hand practically. So he went down the stairs, right? And I could, I came down behind him because I was trying to push him out the front door. And I saw Jason and Keith there. And I said to Jason, who is this? And Jason's like, I thought he was the painter. This is so cute. Jason's like, I thought he was the painter. And I'm like, what painter? And he goes, well, he looked like a painter. And I'm like, but we're not having anything painted. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, anyway. So, um, yeah. So the guy... Literally, um, I get him out the front door. When I get to the bottom of the stairs, I literally open the front door and shove him out the front door and, and lock the door. I call the police. The police would not come to my neighborhood. They're like, are you sure that he's like not a friend of yours? I'm like, no, I, I would know if he was a friend. Are you sure? Like he just didn't go in the wrong house. I said he was in my bedroom. I have little kids. Like, come on. Anyhow. Once he left my, sorry, I'm moving so much. My anxiety completely went away, completely went away. So anytime I felt anxiety like that, 
I knew we were either going to be busted in on or robbed or something along those lines. So I took note of that experience and I was like, okay, anytime a thought comes into my head where um, I used to see a woman behind my mom for years when she woke me for school in the morning, I thought it was normal. <laughs> she had a doppelganger. She probably had her mother or grandmother. Um, but anyway, the anxiety it subsided and then the SWAT team came. They had a gun pointed to his head. He was an escape mental patient. Anyway, he was an escape mental patient for real. Um, and yeah, they had him on the ground SWAT, but I wasn't necessarily afraid of him. I just didn't understand what happened, but that anxiety left after that. So when I feel that kind of heightened anxiety, I know that a someone's coming into my house. See, I associate the different levels of how my body feels with different things. So, and people who are very psychic will have anxiety a lot. They will. Yeah. Multiple sort. Exactly. I made choice to take the vice and let's go. Yeah. It changes everything. Now let's address with the, with the negative self-talk that Santa talks about her boyfriend, if that's her name, I think it Sorry, I can't pull the screen down. Anyway, um, when you're talking about voices that you hear outside of yourself, what they call schizophrenics, when they say people are schizophrenics, what they're hearing is non-human entities targeting and talking. So imagine, okay, I was going to go like this. Imagine you and I are at the mall or six of us are at the mall or wherever the hell we are, the roller rink, the mall. And three of us you can see and three of us you can't, but we can see the three. So we're talking to them and we're having conversations. So we know they're there. But what if people are born into overly religious homes where they are taught that there's God and there's evil and that there's entities on the astral level putting the negative self-talk? Because if they can get you to kill yourself or they can get you to harm yourself or they can get you to take drugs, they love that because they can siphon off you and feed off you, which is what I figured out. Um, it's Santa's 35 year old son. Thank you. So what he has to do, what has happened to him, I believe is I believe it's a religious thing. Number one, with most of my schizophrenic clients, and I've had many over the years, like some are adults and they used to just come over to the house and thinking back on it, I probably put us all in danger doing that, but I was never really scared, but they hear, would hear voices. So I know the doorway or the veil is very open. So what I do is I ask them to literally, when the, when the negative voice comes in your head and says, you're a worthless piece of fat shit, because my voices would say, you just need to kill you. After Jimmy died, I told you the voices kept telling me, you need to kill yourself. Just kill yourself. I had to hide in a closet. I had small teeth. I went, oh my God. So the, I heard those voices. They kept telling me to kill myself. Um, those are negative. They want you to do that because if they can take you off this planet, they can feed off your loneliness, your guilt. After you kill yourself, all of the feelings you will have on the other side, they can, it's a plethora. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a banquet. It's like going to Vegas and being a chub muffin and eating through the banquet. So what I say is when the voices come and they say you're a worthless piece of shit, once a day, when you hear that voice, turn around and say to it, you're entitled to your opinion. I think I'm great. You have to talk back to the voice because if you react to it, they can suck on your energy. So you actually have to talk back to it. When the voice says you're a fat, ugly bitch, say to the voice, that's fine, but I don't see myself that way. I'm cute, hot, and whatever. Because that's the negative self-talk. And the self-talk is actually them outside of us talking to us because they wish they were us number one. And number two, they have an easy way in. But going back to the childhood of people who are schizophrenic, I believe it starts from an over fixation on religious ideation. There's God and there's demons. And there's certainly a plethora of other things in between everything else. So there's not just one thing. There's many, many, many things. It's not just you go to heaven and you're on earth. That That's the biggest line of bullshit has nothing to do with that. And you can say everybody's a demon. Some people are just fucking assholes. Um, but on the astral level, they can target you. And also, I believe, and I believe this 100%, I believe that when they see God's light in people, 
they try to take them down in any way they can. They see sensitive, sweet souls like your son is and like a lot of schizophrenic people are, and they just can't shut the doorways. So those energies keep coming through because they know they can. So since you have to live in that environment, for example, if you live in Hell's Kitchen in New York, you have to live in that neighborhood, right? So you have to learn to get used to walking home. You can't be afraid every time because you have to walk home, right? So when the voices are speaking to you, you have to say to them, you're fucking entitled to your opinion. I don't agree with you. You have to answer them back and correct what they're saying. In other words, shove it back on them. They're counting on you feeling mortified and having an emotional response to it. So you have to learn to become observational, which is really hard with schizophrenic people because they believe what the voices say. And the voices are just that. It's like people hollering at you from outside your front door. They are doing that, but what's it matter what they say? So you know how I block my thoughts? Um, yeah, let's see. Oh my God, uh, I, I get this about driving far. Yes, it is. They try to fuck with you all the time. They try to fuck with you. Um, yeah, you can use it. What causes anxiety? So many things, Jenna, so many things. It can be, um, energy frequency that, that doesn't vibrate correctly. It can be psychic sensitivity. It can be anything that you ingest in your body, chemicals, hormones, anything like that. It can be so many different things. Um, sometimes I hear voices talking to each other out loud. Yeah. Because you're hearing into the astral. Hi, Bobby. Oh my God, Bobby, I'm on my computer. My phone says I can't rotate. And now my eye is like crazy and looking this way. Bobby, I got to show you something. I have to distract and show Bobby because she hasn't seen. So Bobby, this is for you. <laughs> Look at the shoes. I did the pole class tonight. Look at these shoes. These are seven inch shoes. I dare anybody to wear these. Okay, like I just about tell myself. Look, the shoes are back. And we have the portable espresso machine that makes coffee on the run and charges in your car along with the portable kettle. All right. I will call you tomorrow, Bobby, and explain all about that. So getting back to, um, I'm not here. I'm talking. Yeah, they can. I know the shoes, Bobby, they're crazy shoes. I also bruised the shit out of myself on the pole, almost probably popped an implant and smacked my head against it. Um, Oh, there you go. You heard the angels. Good for you. Yeah, they they talk to you. The voices will talk to you. If you do certain drugs, it opens the doorway to them. And remember, a lot of psych meds that they give to people are actually doorways and they want you on the psych meds. They want everybody so they can frequency cut down your strength. So what I say, I know it's very scary, but it's like dealing with a bully in the schoolyard. Is the bully really going to kill you? Probably not. So when they talk to people with schizophrenia, they're being fucking bullies because they know those people can hear them and other people can't hear them. So they go and they target them. So what I feel is very important is when you hear those say, I'm not full of shit or I'm not ugly or I'm not fat or I'm not stupid. Talk right back. Say, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And they'll come back even harder. Talk right back to them. You have to correct it verbally so that you start to bring your self love to yourself very hard for schizophrenics. They also have to understand that they're protected regardless of who is demonic and who is whatever. It doesn't matter who's whatever. Everybody's whatever. So they literally have to see themselves in a different way. So what does it mean? It means someone's calling you. Um, yeah, the microgreen salads. Bobby gave me salad on the go for my car. So I've got coffee, water, and microgreens. <laughs> I'm living in my car, y'all. Um, yeah, I'm used to the computer, but I, I can't look. I can't see myself. Am I going to have a baby soon? I hope so. I hope you do. Um, yeah, whatever works for you. But schizophrenic people, the, the, the veil doorway is so open. And they've usually been open through some kind of childhood trauma. So you might want to try to heal your son's trauma because a lot of times kids will dissociate when they're abused, physically, mentally, sexually. So they will dissociate. And by dissociation, they can get out of their bodies, meaning their physical body is there while somebody targets them, but their etheric body is elsewhere so that they're not connected to what's happening to the physical. It's self-preservation. As a result of that, it opens up doorways for those kinds of energies to come through. Um, 
Yes, he's living in a video game. You know, he might, I, I'm beginning to think we all are. Um, yes, empowerment is very important. It's so important. It's so important. And when I'm, my daughter Momo has gifts and has anxiety. Yes, tell her that that's, that's, no, it's because of the frequencies. My Jason has anxiety. Keith had anxiety. I had anxiety. I had anxiety from the age of four on. Like I could not eat solid food. I had panic attacks. Mo Jason will tell you. When you ask him what his mom ate when he was little, he will say she ate food on the floor out of a baby food jar. That little boy would watch me while I would have complete panic attacks. I had to touch a wood floor, sleep on the floor. I had to rip the carpet up and sleep on the floor. John wasn't so happy about that. And I would eat baby food and blended food because I had such bad anxiety. Um, so, yeah, I had a traumatic experience at John's. No, paranormal. Yeah. Repressed memories. Yes. Yes. That's, that's a lot of what happens. Yeah. The abuse. I have a lot of anxiety. So anxiety, this is what I do with anxiety. Now I could not do it when my boys were younger, especially when I was going to the hospital, running around in my underwear while John was trying to find me. And I had little baby Keith in my arms and Jason on my side. And I was having panic attack, thought I poisoned them by giving them old mayonnaise, like I have weird thoughts, right? Really compulsive, intrusive thoughts. A lot has to do with psychic ability with that. And then the other part of it is when you have anxiety due to trauma, there's a, what that is, in my opinion, energetically, when I see it on somebody's body, what that is, is it is the abuser's shame and guilt and indecency towards themselves projected onto you through the abuse. So when they do an act of physical, physical sexual abuse or physical abuse, they are taking their own shame, guilt, and their own indecency that's directed towards them. And they're putting it onto you with the act of physicality, okay? Putting it onto you. That's where your anxiety is coming from. So you have been, you are now given that energy and you walk off with it for your life. Like you walk off with it. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> Bobby, we need to lock your parents up. Your parents need to go on a timeout. Um, yes, medical trauma can do it for sure. Medical trauma. Yeah, medical trauma, but they put it on to you. So yes, and they never teach, they never teach us. Is this my anxiety? Am I really scared that my hair is going to turn blue if I eat pepper? Am I really scared of that? Or is that somebody else's thinking? Is that really my thought? Do I really think I need to stab myself? Those are not my thoughts. We do not teach our children that intrusive thoughts can come from outside of us on the astral. We don't teach children that. We teach them it's all us. It's all mental illness. I'm not ditching mental illness, but mental illness is a derivative of trauma. So the gateway to mental illness is trauma. Vietnam vets, all of that kind of thing. It is trauma, childhood sexual abuse, etc. So when we talk about mental illness, why don't we stop the trauma? It's actually about stopping the trauma. And when we talk about mental illness, we don't add the spiritual component in on it. So there's a spiritual component to everything as well. Um, Oh God, she's into the furry lifestyle. Yes, P PTSD. We need to trauma that one. I don't think she's fake. Who's calling me fake? I can't even see it. Why are y'all calling me fake? Why are you calling me fake? Why you want to call me fake? My boobs are fake. But why you want to call me fake? Come on now. Um, okay, Andrea, that's not mental illness. That's a form of psychic. You said he has premonitions when he's really ill. So his mental illness is because people don't understand who he is. It's not mental illness. They want to drug you. That's why they call it mental illness. How about a reaction to an extreme circumstance, an event, a thought, timing, something, a feeling? My boobs are fake too. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, why are people saying I'm not real? Who's on here saying that? God damn it. Is my family again fucking with me? Um Let's see. Thank you. He says he's controlled. He feels he needs lots of prayers. Okay, let's give us your son's name, Santa. Give it, Let's all pray for Santa's son. Yes, 
you can have prayers, but you can say them yourself too. And you, and you know what? He's not wrong about being controlled. People put masks on and took vaccines. He is not wrong about being controlled. He's definitely not wrong about that. We are controlled. I can't just go out and do what I want. I can't, I can't, you know, I'm told I can't walk where I want. I can't do what I have to do. I have to follow rules. I have to have a driver's license. God didn't put me here to do that. I'm supposed to enjoy my life, not within the restrictions. And so is your son. So your son is not wrong. We are controlled. He's not wrong. He's just thinking of it. You are thinking of it in a different way, but he is not wrong. So let's see. Hold on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These people are like, they must be messing with you on there. Um, he's not wrong. So I lose name. Oh, how interesting. Um, yes, I've heard of Metatron. No, I don't believe anybody channels Metatron for the love of God. <laughs> yes, um, I have real big, big, I have real big boobs. I'd welcome fake, fake height. Yes, let's go get some fake height. Santa, we'll pray for your son, honestly. But he's not wrong. We are very controlled. I can't go punch Gavin Newsom, so I'm being controlled. Like my my urge is to say, dude. You know? Anyway, I can't do it. Can it can everyone hear the spiritual realm voices? Um, no, not everybody can hear it. Not everybody has psychic ability. Not everybody is willing to understand it. Um there you go. Kay, Santa, read Kay's comment there. Sleep paralysis is really interesting. Sleep paralysis is, um, colored orbs is great. That's spirit coming into your room. Sleep paralysis is interesting. Sleep paralysis makes me think that maybe you've let energy in around you and it's trying to block you from getting out of your body. Remember on this earth, they want to stop each, hi Lou, they want to stop each and every one of us from doing our duty. So they distract us with this. My brother, oh, honey. Later, my mother tells me he was being attacked and they, and they were pulling him. Hold on later. Who was it? I can't get this. Who was attacking him, love? Oh, there. Who was attacking him? Come back. See, I can't do this. Uh, who was attacking him? Real people or spirit people? Because there is a thing called gang. Um, I have sleep paralysis at times. You need to pray to get rid of that in the name of Jesus. Black tourmaline, obsidian, lapis, selenite connects with the angelic realm. Um, oh, my God. Oh, Zempic shots. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Yeah, they will remember we're being watched all the time. We're being watched all the time. Okay, wait, Mexico, Dr. Nuri Morin does good. I'm going to write that name down. <laughs> Excuse me while I write down a good dentist. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, sleep paralysis is really them blocking you either on the outside. So your etheric body's outside of the physical and you can't move. And they're stopping you from coming in, which they can't really do, but they will try to do it. Or you're inside your physical and they're stopping your progress in leaving. So it can be either or. My husband had to wake me because I was screaming in my sleep. Oh, my God. They watch us. How do they watch us besides camera? No, they watch us through the astral. They fucking watch us. They watch us. It's like they open... Um, the Wizard of Oz behind in the city of Oz or the wizard or wherever the fuck he lived, the Green Emerald Palace, wherever it was. Nobody knew what he looked like. He sat up there watching. They watch us through the astral level. They watch us all the time. We are being watched all the time. Period. Thank you for that, Spirit 1111. Um, oh, my goodness. My goodness. Yeah, I'm such a good fool. Yeah. Everyone talks about gangs and I'm such a control freak. I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, when you jerk like that, you're either grounding in or grounding out of your body. That's what you're doing. You're, you're probably coming right back into your body or you're getting ready to leave your body. I was currently having a manic episode and she's broke and doesn't have money. And at this point, 
Okay, well, conspiracy theories, again, all of the, okay. So they use mental illness. I'm going to say this again. I don't know how to say this. Usually bipolar, any kind of problem that they call mental illness is connected to trauma in your life or some like pe people that come back from Vietnam. Sometimes they can't go inside. Sometimes they can't, you know, function. Sometimes they're high forever. Um, they can't live in a house. They can't da, 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 da. They jump when they hear a motorcycle go by because it sounds like a gunshot. That's not mental illness. That's a reaction to trauma. So a lot of what we call bipolar manic are trauma-based responses. So let's get that clear. I'm not a doctor, but that's really my belief. So it becomes a mental illness because we have to label everything. So the word conspiracy theory is a label that the CIA gave, look up the history of it, in order to stop people from looking for things that are real. Nothing about what is going on right now is a conspiracy theory. And just because your mom thinks things doesn't mean they're not real. Just because your mom's bipolar doesn't mean she isn't actually able to articulate those things. Um, critical thinking isn't, yeah, critical thing. That's correct. Um, I don't know how to soften the grounding in Beth. I just know when it, when it comes, I just know when it comes in, oh my God, my arms are sore. Um, going through her third chemo. Oh, I'm sorry. I found her looking for too dizzy. Okay. Pink. I think your name's pink Patty or pink fairy. I can't see it. I'm sorry. Your mommy says she's 81. You know what? Scoop her up and watch her. Scoop her up. Tell her, I'm going to scoop you up, mom, and we're going to have some fun. Take her to get her nails done and skip the chemo. Just, just spend time with her. Spend time with your mommy. Yeah, pray to God. Exactly. Pray to God. Exactly. I knew a Vietnam vet. Um, her said she can't. Yeah, she can't because she can hear all of the talking. That's exactly right. Yeah, they call you conspiracy theory to discredit you. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. And I swear to God, I'm going to say this. The reason they legalize alcohol is so they can get into your fucking brain thinking. Okay, that's not a conspiracy. I just saw something that said ads inserted. <laughs> I feel like I'm in hell. Um, anyway, when you recognize that everything that they do with alcohol, weed and drugs is in order to open your energy fields up. Let's see. Dr. Jess is saying the same thing about trauma. She was challenging. Yes. Yes. They hate her for being wrong. I've always said that. I said, there is no mental illness the way. Thank you for the donation, by the way, um, or the super chat, whatever we're calling them. There is no mental illness. It's a reaction to trauma. The reason they use the word mental illness is because they can sell prescriptions. It's about money. If you actually had to, why are we not addressing the fucking trauma? Why are we addressing who did what? Why, why, you know, what we need is trauma healers on the planet. We need them to go out and heal the trauma. But when you're looking, when, when people call people conspiracy theories, one of the main reasons, and I'm not joking you about this, I'm going to sound psychotic when I say this. I grew up in a household where, as you all know the story, anyway, scapegoated, blamed, and I did do drugs as a teenager, not a lot, but some. When I got into my 20s, I realized that adults play games with other adults that are drunk and high. It's really easy to toss blame on somebody. They're drunk, they're high, they're fucked up, they're crazy, they're stupid. So I thought to myself, obviously the government wants people this way because they push alcohol down, like they closed during the pandemic. You couldn't have your hair salon open to pay your rent, to pay your money, but the liquor stores were open. That should tell you that they want to take your energy. So as a very young adult, like in my 20s, early 20s, before I got pregnant with Jason, I quit doing any mind-altering substance purposely because they can control you through your addiction. This way, when you speak and you're articulate and you're not high, they can't turn around and discredit you, which they fucking love to do. If you've ever done drugs, they love to go, well, it's because you were high. Uh, if you smoke weed, it's because you smoke weed. No, it's not that actually. You might actually be saying something and you smoke weed, but they'll never let you get away with it. So, you know, um, yeah, I know. What is, I just saw that. 
drugs and alcohol leave you open. Exactly. To take over and everything we've been talking about. Exactly. Um, I'm done with the healing. I'm just going to be a feral bush rat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, well, the weed opens you up too. Remember, look who's calling y'all. This is John. And who are we playing? The Black Crows. I just like hearing the ring. We're going to put them on. Call you back later. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I am responding to my live chat. Why? Who's asking? Maybe it's Memorex. <laughs> I need a pumpkin spice latte after this combo. Yeah. Um, Crystal Poltergeist will follow you. And yes, pray it. Crystal, Pol sorry, Crystal. She's correct. Poltergeist follow you. Demons follow you. If you have any negative thoughts, here's how you block your thoughts. Here's how you block them. So you can block your thoughts. What I do is I do a grocery list. So when I'm afraid of something, anything, walking home in the dark, bears in my backyard, whatever, I literally block my thoughts. So I don't think you're going to get raped or mauled or murdered or your car's going to break down. What I say is you need three bananas. You need some ice cream. The cat needs cat food. Don't forget to make a nail appointment. Oh my God, you need Kleenex. I do that in my head. That's exactly what I do. See, Cynthia, you said you disconnect from your toxic family members, mental health from insanity. There was no insanity on your part. Your toxic family members were trauma-based abusers. You had a response to the trauma. There's no mental illness there. You are not mentally ill. You were in a trauma response to people who were abusing you. If somebody carjacks you and you respond by crying, punching, throwing a rock in their face, that does not make you mentally ill. It makes you responding to trauma. If you get raped and you're afraid to go outside or you become rageful or you become angry and you want to stab the person, that does not make you crazy. It makes you responding. See, people got this all fucking confused. They got it confused. They got it confused. They tell you, I'm doing the finger pointing tonight. They tell you, you know, you got to turn the other cheek, be the bigger person. No, if somebody crosses your boundaries, Push up against it and say, don't do that again. Set a boundary. Be very, very specific. It's not okay. We've been taught the reverse. As soon as somebody fights back when someone attacks them, people go, well, you really, you really shouldn't have done that. So when we have vigilante justice and a mother, like that woman that went into court and killed her daughter's child molester in the court, and then they sent her to jail for like 10 years, and, I can't, and her name began with an E, and I can't remember it. Anyway, when she went to jail... People are like, you shouldn't have done that. Yes, she should. Yes, she should. You do this. This is my response. You have free will to do what you do. I have free will to respond the way I want to respond, period. End of conversation. You know. Oh, no, we. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Did she elope or something? Yeah, I push back too. Anybody says, that, John just said to me the other day, he's like, you're so sensitive. I'm like, I'm not sensitive. I hear the fucking, and it wasn't nothing he said. It was a, somebody said, I hear, I, I get an intention when you say something and it sets me off like that. And I will tell you. So um, she just didn't invite you. Oh, message her and just say, I hope you have a happy life. Try that. Try being gracious. Like uh, you are gracious, but try just expressing yourself that way. Yeah. I'm so sorry, we. I don't know what to say. Hi, Ashley. Oh, my God. Hi, Ashley. What is it when you slam into your body before? You? It's you coming back into your body and having a recognition that you've been out. And you guys, before I go, I want to say this. Oh, my God. Please, please. My only email is my emails off of my website, which are at sloanbella.com. I do have Gmails, but I don't use those to talk to clients. If you're on TikTok, I only have one channel. It's got 83.9 thousand people. That is my channel. The rest of those people are fucking liars. Please don't give them money. Please don't give them money. Um, it's just, I don't know. I was uninvited to my only biological son. Jesus, these people, these kids. I'm so sorry, Beth. Um, 
I need my cigarettes on the other. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. I'm glad we got live, not just the phone. <laughs> I Well, I tried. It's making me nuts. Um, yeah, people hate boundaries, but I will block you with your boundaries, which is why I had to throw a couple of friends out of my life because they'd be stealing and competing. As soon as I feel like you're competing, I can't talk to you. So um, don't be stupid and give money to strangers online. For the Yes, my website, so you know. I will tell you if my readings are open, okay? I literally only vouch for myself at this point. My website is myname.com, sloanbella.com. That's who I am. My Instagram has a blue check because I paid for that. And you can book or communicate on my website. And if you have my phone number, then you know how to text. Not that I answer emails or texts all the time, but you have it. I do not have other Gmail accounts with... Um, yeah, that was her, Kurt, coming into the house when you smelled the cigarette smoke. That was her. I do not um, have other emails. I mean, I personally do have other emails, but I don't use them for clients. So the information is on my website. So don't give shit to these other people. They're not me. And they have no right to do that. And like, they should get a fucking life. I don't know why they do it. It's really, really fucking disgusting. It's so disgusting. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm like, what is going on with everybody? It's so weird. And then I have, I let's see, will I get a job soon? Yeah, you probably will, actually. You probably will. I believe in Bigfoot, big time. The copy, wait, I had a conversation. She doesn't like me. Good for you, death dealer. These people, why are they copying? I do not call people dear. Dear, I feel drawn to give you a reading. I'm not calling you to give you a fucking reading unless you emailed me. If you emailed me and I'm reading back emails, then I'll talk to you. But I'm not just calling you random or I have something to tell you. Grand rising. I'm going to say grand rising. Fuck you with that shit. Who talks that way? Okay. <laughs> She's, and I talked to her and asked her to help. Oh, that's nice, Kurt. She's probably really, really excited that you can see and feel her and hear her. Yeah. Sloan, what's going on with our government? Oh, God. Just ignore the government. We can't stop these bitches, so ignore them. Literally don't pay attention. I just say, fuck the government. Every time I go out, I'm like, fuck the government. Fuck them all. And when somebody says something about a Republican, I'm like, orange man, bad. Orange man, bad. They look at you. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Trump's bad. Sure. He's bad. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, Nola, that's so interesting, too. Angel numbers. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm yawning you guys. Angel numbers. I don't know much about angel. I don't call people. I'm hiding. Thank you. We write. <laughs> we <laughs> bitch. I don't call anybody. I'm hiking. I'm hiking in the morning. I'm not doing readings like that. I'm not going to be open all day. I have a, a, a life, but I am open when I'm open. But the point is it's through my website. That is why it's through my website. You know, Oh, uh, energetic. Yes, please send me. I know I won't mind. Send me. Um, all right, you guys. Uh, let's see. I've got to go. My eyes are blurring out. I'm exhausted. It's time for the coffee machine. <laughs> and my little frother. I think I have to keep batteries in this. I have a feeling I have to keep this one charged. Look how tired my eyes are, y'all. Look, little batteries live in here for my milk frother. Pocket milk frother. Pocket milk frother. So there's that. Yeah, baby. Okay. So because I'm I'm now insane and stuffed again. It's just so weird. Um, root canals are bad. I have too many. I have too many too, Mindy. I have a lot too. Um, the port of coffee thing, right? Isn't it great? Like my life is complete. I don't need a man. I need metal and my coffee machine. I'll shut up anytime soon. Okay, wait, there's one other thing I was going to say. Oh, my calendar books are open for November. So if you want to go check it, you could go through on November. If there's been a problem with something you've ordered or whatever, I'm checking into it. I'm doing it, honestly. Um, you believe in dog men. I don't know what the dog men are. Meadow looks so cute. She's so cute in her little jeans, Meadow. 
She's so look at no coffee. She's so cute. She's so cute. I love her. What a nice little girl. And she's all smiling. She's really sweet. She sees daddy and mommy go by and she's like this. She's like, a, <laughs> she's like, it's like a freeway for her. There goes dad. There goes mom. There goes sissy. There goes dad. There goes mom. She's really cute. All right, you guys. Good night. We got this working. So this is our backup. I will be on the phone with Apple again, though. I must understand what has happened. Let's see. Are there clients that you have had to turn down? Um, if by turn down, you mean I got too busy? Yeah, I used to refer them out, but I'm not doing that anymore. But turn them down? I don't know that I've turned. I've had some crazy clients, like really crazy, meaning behavior unreal, very interesting, all of those things. So, but I don't know that I'll turn you down. Usually people don't come to me or ask for a reading unless they want one. Like, I mean, I don't have, so there'd be no reason to turn them down. They want the readings usually. I mean, I'm assuming, right? When you go to buy a pair of pants, it's not like the store owner has to say, get out because you just want to buy your pair of pants. I'm assuming it's the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, John is so I can't forget what John, I don't forget him. Um, if my Canadian money was worth anything. <laughs> I know I have Canadian money. We that's the problem too. That's a problem, right? Let's protect everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, absolutely. And remember, more importantly, when they talk about, you know, love and all of that, that's very important. But in order to love, and this goes for Santa's son who's schizophrenic in order to achieve love, you must be able to be authentic with yourself. So you must have radical self-acceptance with who you are as a person. That's what I know. Pretty money, right? It is pretty. I have some too. Yes. Yes. Yes, Amanda. Oh my God. You're so smart. Look at you. I do readings over the phone. I don't do Zoom usually because people can take my image. Not that they can't do it here. And I have no control over my image. That's why. Oh, and you guys will be so excited. I'm going to, I swear I'm going to sleep. You guys will be so excited. Why? Because I'm literally editing my astrology book for beginner astrologers. I'm literally editing that right now. And I am doing my best within three months to get it out so that I can teach a beginner class. So I will be doing Zoom for that. I want everybody to have the booklet so they know how to follow along because it's just a way of, it's like when they teach me the dance class, they teach me a set of movements that I put together. That's why I feel the book is needed. Um, so that should be pretty soon. I don't Zoom or anything that FaceTime. I don't FaceTime crap. You know why I don't? I had a friend that was like really controlling and they're like, can you, can you FaceTime? I'm like, I'm never FaceTiming. You're not fucking watching me walk around. I fucking walk around and you can talk to me. I don't need to FaceTime you freaks. Bigfoot, um, when that can make. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. But Bigfoot is a dimensional creature. Yeah, step-by-step -step beginner astrology book. That's how I wrote it. So I'm just literally editing it. And yes, John is my sounding board. He's like, that's really complicated. I'm like, it's a good thing you're not a beginner astrologer. <laughs> He's not taking the class. I'm just making him listen to it. Um, yes, the eclipse. I will. All right. I must go because I've got coffee to steam. <laughs> Please don't hang up on me or think I'm insane. Thank you. Uh, wait, where did you order the items from? Um, I ordered everything. This thing I ordered on Amazon. It's called an Uten. Is that what you're asking about? It's called an Uten um, espresso maker. And I ordered it on Amazon and it fucking works. And it's a good little bitch. My friend, this little thing was like 20 bucks Amazon. And like, literally, I know I sound crazy, but when you're in the car and you're driving, instead of going 400 miles out of your way, like we did in Utah to find Starbucks, I can heat water and just put in like Lipton tea because I always carry the tea packets with me. I can do that. <laughs> um, are John and I twin flames? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's a karmic thing. I'm just used to him. I don't know what to do. Like you can't, 
I don't know, after, whether it's toxic, abusive as fuck or not, what are you going to do after 36 years of marriage? I'm going to talk to another man and let him in my life? No. Um, you think my kids want to be friendly to another man? I mean, they probably would if John were dating. That's how they are. But if I were dating, no, they wouldn't. So, yeah, I prefer black rifle. Yes, I like black coffee too. Um, yeah, I don't know about Vladimir Putin. Anyway, oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, free GMOs for all. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in twin flames, but there's definitely a karmic tie. I don't know if he missed me. I mean, I would think he would miss me because I'm fun. <laughs> Sometimes like, you know, um, I wake up in the middle of the night to go running. I'm on the phone in the corner. You know, i now, if I lived around the house and Meadow was there, I'd be spying on Meadow at night watching her sleep. She's so cute. Um, yeah, it's my cut. Yeah. It's my comfort zone. Um, exactly. Oh my God. $222 in Canada. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> 120 in Canada. No, I got this. I think, well, it was pretty expensive. It was 80 something where I ordered it from. It was pretty expensive. I'll admit it, but just listen, $6 of coffee every day. It's covered for in a month, right? You want to see Meadow before I go? Okay, we're going to look at baby Meadow because my obnoxious self, Kenna just sent me a video with Lila playing. I'm going to show you again because I'm in, in um, hold on. Let me show you. I love my Meadow so much lila's playing with her see isn't she cute look there she is so little meadow loves her lila lila's 12 and she got baby meadow so it's very nice that's so nice you guys to ask that's so nice it's so nice it's so cute i love her she's so cute She's like my little friend. I have to turn the volume down on this because it's my big fat ass voice. But there she was this morning. She was in her little crawly thing. She's three months yesterday, the day before the second. She was three months and she has she has two little spoolies on the top of her head. So we call her bug now, like little ladybug because she looks like she had little bug antennas. She's so cute. Look at her. She's so cute. She's in her little spoolie. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm grandma, GG. Um, yeah, no, thank you guys for asking. It's so nice. Some people roll their eyes at, you know, GG, but I can't help it. So um, 35 year gal, so I get it. Yes, yes. Yes, it's very, see, you love the coffee maker. Thank you, my people, <laughs> the coffee maker. Vladimir Putin should have one of these when he's waging war on people because he could stop, have some coffee and calm down. Jeez. Um, yeah. Okay. You guys, uh, wait, you mentioning only fans, but for my pole dancing, you'd be sorely disappointed. <laughs> I had to put my butt up against the pole, slink around real cute and grab myself. And I hit myself in the head. That's how I am in the glass. Um, yeah, the coffee, Bobby, this thing, I'm telling you, this makes bitch ass coffee with little pods. I'm like, I, I got to call you. It's like the microgreens. It's like, what the, like you and your steakouts. Oh my God. You need the kettle to go with the porta potty. Bobby has a porta potty. Should I have said that out loud? The kettle to heat your water, to go with your Nespresso in the machine and you and Lucas could have coffee while you're stalking, you know who. Well, getting paid and making a good living, but you could do that. Um, there you go. All right. I'm Mimi. Oh, Mindy, you're Mimi. I don't believe in twin flames. <clears throat> yeah, you have the, you have the, 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 yeah, the potty in your car. So <laughs> the kettle, it's just called, um, what is it? And that's that thing. What was the kettle called? This kettle is called a portable electric kettle. That's all it is, is it's a portable electric kettle. And look, oh my God, it comes with a carrier. I'm so excited. Okay. So like, I have a carrier. It's my carrier for my kettle. Anyway, my portable kettle is so fun. I'm going to boil tea and drink coffee, y'all. Um, yeah, I try to avoid people who hate coffee. <laughs> 
I talked about Tupac's killer. Yes. Um, Bailey. Yeah. My website, Bailey, just go to my website, sloanbella.com and go look and see what's open. Um, all right, you guys, me and Bobby, we got a porta potty in the car. We got coffee. We got water. That's good. Cause we have a porta potty. Maya and I used to get stuck in traffic jams. I keep saying I'm going, we used to get stuck in traffic jams coming from hiking after hiking 25 miles, taking the tram down, driving three hours in Sunday traffic, drinking coffee, laughing our asses off, being stuck, not being able to pee. The Starbucks cups come in so handy. Okay. Ads will run shortly for some viewers. Oh my God. I don't know what happened here. I'm on my computer. I don't understand. Okay. Bye you guys. Mwah. I'm so glad we're back. I can stop having a nervous breakdown. I eat salmon every day. Salmon and steamed vegetables. I do like non-fat ice cream with no sugar. I do like whipped cream. Other than that, I eat blueberries and that's about it. And protein shakes. And that's about it. That's it. All right. Bye, you guys. Have a good night. Okay. I'm trying to, I don't even know how to turn this off. Okay. End stream. I'm assuming it's this. Forgive me. I have no clue. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Your stream will stop immediately. No longer be live. End. I guess it's end.